Hey guys, Harrison Warren back at it once again for a brand new video for you and welcome to episode 6 of the online racer for Formula 1 2013. F1 2013 online gameplay featuring real life Formula 1 topics worth talking about. And it's been a very, very interesting and quite newsworthy weekend in terms of Formula 1 this, uh, this past week. Um, with the main news that McLaren have made another domino fall in the great driver reshuffle of 2014 it seems as they have announced i think they announced like two days ago that sergio perez will be leaving the team and uh, kevin magnuson will be joining um in 2014. um obviously big news one of the most high profile teams in formula one mclaren making a very big switch i mean sergio perez has, has only been with them for one season and they're already going to drop him and move on to someone from their own driver academy which is quite an interesting move into um for example thinking it like this way when hamilton left mclaren to go to mercedes we found that i think it was about singapore time last season and, you know, McLaren pretty quickly announced afterwards that they, they were bringing in Sergio Perez to replace him. I was thinking they were going to mould Sergio Perez into the future of that team. I, I saw Perez maybe as this this long-term project that um, McLaren were going to have. They were going to mould him into the team. They were going to turn him into this young stud that could win races and possibly a world championship or two because we all know McLaren are incredibly well resourced they have brilliant engineers they have a brilliant team they've got good money behind them and just in general they're a really strong team and to me it, it always felt like McLaren were going to, to going to try and rebuild the team after Hamilton left because Hamilton was obviously the golden boy he was brought up and raised to be you know the McLaren man you know, for, for as long as they wanted, for as long as he wanted to, and as long as McLaren were happy to keep him around, because obviously they did, because Hamilton is still one of the best drivers in the field today. Then Hamilton pulled the plug on that last season. So it, it, I always had the impression that I thought McLaren were going to be replacing Hamilton with a guy like Perez, who's young, who's talented, who they can mould into the seat and they can, and they can turn into this stud future driver. Uh, alongside Jensen Button, who isn't getting any younger. I think Jensen Button's 33 years old. He's already thought about retirement once. He's got a long-term girlfriend who I know wants to tie the knot in, uh, Jessica Mishabata. I think she's actually come out and said, you know, um, I, I want to marry him, but only after he retires, which, I mean, you know, maybe the urge of marriage uh, will pull Jensen out of the sport a little bit early. But he's in the twilight of his career as well. I think... Jensen's Button's days of being a world title contender are over unless McLaren get a really good car again. Something something in the range of their 2012 car, um, if only with a lot more reliability. But I was surprised at this. I thought Perez was going to be a long-term answer for that team. But then you realise, and, and then when you dig a little bit deeper, you got to realise that McLaren have got a young driver academy. I get all this from Scott Woodwiss, so aka Rapid Scorpion, who's the biggest McLaren young driver academy nut hugger I know. <laughs> Scott, if you're watching, I love you really. Um, <laughs> but uh, they have Kevin Magnussen and Steffel Van Dorn in their own driver academy, who are two, by the looks of it, really solid drivers. And Magnussen's potential is there. I mean, like I said, he's, he's this year's Formula Renault 3.5 series champion. He was runner-up in, in British uh, Formula 3 in 2011 as well. So madison has got experience. He's been he's been driving in single seaters since 2008. Uh, he's still only 21 years old. The guy's like two years, like two months younger than I am. That's quite scary now I think about it. And now he's a, already a Formula Renault World Champion. It's quite scary now I think about it. But Magnussen looks quick. He, he he looks like he's got some potential there. So maybe they felt the need to pull the plug. On, uh, on Sergio Perez which I think is a bit harsh to be honest I think Perez was solid I don't think Perez was anything spectacular this year but how much of that was down to the car he was in because the McLaren car has been very very mediocre this year it's it's a real shame and I think that uh, you know that uh, he that, you know having, having him as part of the team I thought was a good move but I think the car has been really average this year. I mean, it, it's it's a real shame because you know, he, you know, because Perez is a talented guy. We saw this in 2012 where he had three podiums last year, 
And maybe it was more down to the Sauber car being so tactically good, having the flexibility to run less pit stops than the other teams, being really good on the tyres, and that would often push Sergio up the field a little bit. Um, but overall, I, 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 I think Perez has been, has been given a bit of a raw deal. The only real yardstick to use when it comes to Perez is to compare him to his teammate Jensen Button. Uh, Jensen Button has 60 championship points compared to Perez's 35. But we already kind of knew that Button's main strength is his consistency. If you give him a solid car for the whole season, per Button will get you solid points throughout the whole season. 2011 prime example, when, when Button was clearly the number two guy in Formula 1 behind Sebastian Vettel when he was having a dominant season. Um, you know, one of only two dominant seasons Vettel's really had. You know, 2011 this year and obviously 2013 this year. Um, but I do feel sorry for Perez. I, I do think he deserved another year given the, how average the McLaren car has been. They're probably going to end up um, finishing... I'd say maybe fifth, probably fifth in the constructors this year, uh, which is, you know, kind of a shame. But, uh, you know, I'm sure McLaren will bounce back. That's why I was so sure that um, that even even if, you know, they would have a bad year this year, I thought they would bounce back because they've, they've got such a good team beneath them as well. But looking at it, looking at their results... If you take out Spygate, which was 2007, McLaren have not been fifth in a World Drivers World Constructors Championship since 2004. They've been a top three team uh, by the looks of it. Yeah, for like, for like 12 of the last 15 seasons, McLaren are a consistent top level team. So overall, this has been a really bad year for McLaren, and I think McLaren are now in rebuilding mode. I think Kevin Magnussen's one, and I think quite easily Steffel Van Dorn could be the other one if um, if Button decides to hang it up earlier than expected. But the dynamic now is that how does this affect the rest of the grid? We know Felipe Massa's now gone to Williams, and that's a done deal to replace Pastor Maldonado. So Pastor Maldonado's now out on the open market. Apparently he says he's got options for next year. The Lotus seat is still up for grabs, even though I'm hearing Quantum Motorsport, who I think bought out 30% of Lotus, have said they want Hulkenberg in the seat. I don't know how much influence that's going to have on the team, but they apparently badly want Hulkenberg. Hulkenberg, as we know, is still a free agent and has been since Germany. Um, now Sergio Perez is out there in the open market. So, and I also heard today that Martin Whitmarsh is apparently spoken to Lotus and, and Force India and apparently have, get, have put in a really good word for Sergio Perez so I really I think I'll say that's a really classy thing for Martin Whitmarsh to do yeah, that, that's, that really is looking after your own there you know you, obviously it, it didn't work out with Perez I, I, I don't think McLaren really wanted to cut Perez I just felt like they, I, feel, I think they felt like they, they didn't have much of a choice they had to rebuild um, rebuild from, the, from within their own, I think. But uh, I really like the fact that Whitmarsh is, is pulling for Perez to get to get him another seat elsewhere. That's, that's, that's a very classy gesture. Um, it's like a good reference on his CV, I suppose. Um, in the meantime, I think the biggest influence in this driver domino reshuffle now is that what does Force India do? I think Force India have had question marks hanging over their two drivers, Paul DeResta and Adrian Satil, for a good while now. And... I'm hearing, or from what a lot of people have been saying, that Force India will make their move when Lotus make their move. Um, the, so apparently Force India are waiting on Lotus to announce whether they sign Maldonado or Hulkenberg, because those are the two candidates that Lotus are apparently considering. It's it's between those two. So I don't know if if if, if Force what Force India are going to do. But Force India, one, like to take their time with driver changes. I mean, they only they only announced Adrian Sittle coming back at the 11th hour, like in, in February, two, I think like a few weeks before the season was set to start. So we might not know Force India's lineup for a long time. Even though that makes less sense now that in-season testing's been lifted. So there'll be more testing. So, you know, they, they, I'm sure they want to get their driver in as soon as they possibly can, more than anything else. But what do they do? Do they keep the rest of and Sittle? Do they cut one? 
I mean, I, have a few races ago, said they should clear the decks altogether. And, you know, they should, they should start over with two new drivers. Because I think even if Hulkenberg or Maldonado get signed by Lotus, I think Sergio Perez and either Hulkenberg or Maldonado is a better team than the rest are in Sittil at the moment. I think Sittil has been very average the whole season. And I think Paul the rest is a bit of a moany bitch. <laughs> the rest of the, the rest of the likes to complain a lot, and, and, and that's not going to help his, his, his team dynamic. And maybe they might be put off by Maldonado being a bit reckless. But if you ignore 2012, you've got to realise Maldonado's had a pretty solid year this year, getting the best out of a Williams car, which has been pretty piss poor the entire season. Maldonado is clearly talented. And I think he probably, I, I think personally he deserves a second chance in Formula 1. I mean, people were, were pissing all over Romain Grosjean last year. But now look at him, he's one of the best drivers in Formula 1 right now. And he's maximising the Lotus and outperforming Kimi Raikkonen at the moment. Um, by the way, get well soon, Kimi. Um, but yeah, I think Force India are the biggest influence in this driver shuffle now and what they do. What do you think they do? What, what do you make of Williams get, getting Felipe Massa in? You know, they, Williams seem to love bringing in retiring Brazilians to their teams now in the twilight of their careers and whatnot. Um, what do you make of the Magnussen signing? Are, are you a McLaren fan? Are you keen on this? Do you like Magnussen? Do you like what, what, what the direction the team is going in? Do you think Stefan van Dorn could get into the team at some point? Uh, and what, what does Force India do? Do you think Force India keep their drivers? Let me know what you think. In the meantime, I've been Harrison101. Thank you very much for watching. I'll catch you guys next time. Sayonara.